you're, um, you're breaking up a little bit. It's like it's buffering. I can hear you and I can see you fine. Yeah. I can't hear you out through this laptop, but oh. we're trying to adjust audio on our side over here. Is the picture frozen or is it okay? Okay. You can get her? You can. Hang on one second, Paul. I just want to make sure that I can hear you through the laptop and then, and then the audio from you going over the, uh, the screen. The good news is we haven't started yet. So. And there's still snow on the ground. God, it's crazy. Uh, hang on. All right. Hello. Okay, perfect. So does it seem like it's okay? Audio is good though. Okay, no problem. All right, so we'll start here in just a minute, and uh, and we'll be good to go. Does that sound good? Perfect. hear me at least Paula okay now I can hear you and see you okay perfect I'm not super worried yeah, if the if the vi long as I can hear you. yeah that's what I was gonna say as long as the audio is there that's good because we'll, I'll be on the camera here so as long as yeah as long as the audio is okay we'll be good to go all right Welcome to High V Today with Tony Tone. We're live inside Muscatine High V on 2nd Avenue in Muscatine, streaming on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Now, here's Tony Tone. Hello, friends. Welcome to the High V Today show. This is Tony Tone. It is Wednesday, April 15th. And to quote the late great artist Prince, sometimes it snows in winter, or sometimes it snows in April. So we are waking up with snow <clears throat> here in Muscatine. Maybe you haven't looked outside 
Um, I had to get a broom out of my uh, garage to brush snow off my car that was in my driveway. So that wasn't really exciting, but it's the reality of living in the Midwest. Uh, sometimes it snows in April. I hope you're doing well. I also would encourage you to uh, check your bank account this morning because it seems like a lot of folks that are set up with the IRS for tax returns via direct deposit will have received their federal stimulus money. So if you're thinking that that hasn't happened, maybe check your bank account. If it's with CBI, check on their app and you might be surprised, right? So that money is coming through. Uh, I want to get to our guest who we're going to chat with via FaceTime. Uh, Paula Lavasser has been here before. She's the program director at New Horizons with uh, Unity Point Health and Trinity Muscatine Public Health, and she's with us via FaceTime. And, uh, and I didn't even realize this, Paula, but it, and it's good to see you. April is Alcohol Awareness Month. Is that correct? It most certainly is. So how have... Oh, and my goodness, you are like cutting out right now. <laughs> so how has, um, how has the current situation impacted or has it impacted the services that you're able to provide at New Horizons? Uh-oh, we may have... Bought, there we go. Maybe we have you. Can you hear me, Paula? No, she's got nothing on her end. All right. Um, I think I'm going to try and call her back really quick. I'm going to I'm going to call you back. I'm giving her the, the signal okay, for call you all back. All I heard of that was New Horizons. <laughs> so I'm sorry. This we've been struggling with this connection this morning. Can you hear me Can now? You repeat that. I'm going to call you right back. Hang on one second. We're going to call her right back. Listen, this is new technology, right? I'm blaming the snow for this. <clears throat> That's what I'm doing. Ooh, it's double Tony on the screen. Look at that. That's I could interview myself, perhaps. Let's see if we can get Paula back on the old FaceTime. Again, April is Alcohol Awareness Month, and Paula and the crew at New Horizons do a great job taking care of people. So we're going to see if we can get her back here in just a second. Not available. Let me try one more time. Hold on here. So anyways, uh, we're gonna talk to her about that. And I've been giving people the option to come in to do this interview or to do it. There we go. Paula, can you hear oh, me now? You, so I was asking if like the, the current situation has changed how you're able to provide services for folks with New Horizons. Can't hear anything. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Nothing? Nothing? Oh, I heard you say nothing. Maybe maybe we're connected again. OK. I was just wondering if the current situation that we find ourselves in has changed how you provide services to folks at New Horizons. I didn't hear most of the question, mm -hmm. but hopefully maybe you can hear me, because I'm mm -hmm. thinking what you asked was, with the current COVID-19 mm -hmm. situation, or has that impacted what we're doing at New Horizons? Yes. I can see you kind of, Tony. So yes. mm -hmm. I'm, ju I'm just going to answer that question. Mm -hmm. um, we are providing all of our services right now via the phone. Uh, starting back in March, it's been a full month now, uh, we decided that for the safety of our clients and for the safety of our staff, it made the most sense to discontinue face-to-face -face services. And so we have moved to having all of our services via the phone. We are actively working on doing, um, starting to do our groups via like a Zoom type of portal, but wanting to make sure that we're protecting confidentiality and that we're using a very secure site. Those, those steps have taken a little bit longer to get there, but we're contacting uh, the clients that are in treatment. We're contacting them almost every single day by phone and uh, checking on them, providing them with education, um, helping them kind of talk about the stress of this whole situation and figuring out ways that they can manage uh, their issues while um, in addition to this COVID-19 situation. So it's been a challenge, but um, really super proud of my staff for 
taking on this challenge in a very unique and different way. Mm -hmm. So we've been working hard over here. So I just, I mean, it's, have you ever dealt with anything like this before? So was there a plan in place? Um, we absolutely have never dealt with anything mm -hmm. like this before. Um, and even like some of the licensure requirements, mm -hmm. some of the funding requirements don't allow us to provide in normal circumstances to provide phone services or telehealth services. And so uh, with the governor issuing the state of emergency, that opened up the opportunity to be able to provide those services that way. And even prior to that, um, Robert Young Center was very clear, we need to take care of our people. We need to take care of our clients. And so we will take care of them first and figure out how we worry about funding and all of those things later, you know? Yeah, and it's, it's unfortunate because I imagine, have you seen an increase in calls during this time? Because obviously, you know, this can be tough for everybody to handle, but if folks are struggling with things like alcohol or substance abuse, it's probably only heightened. So have you seen an uptick in, in calls or sure. services? Yeah, so like the first couple weeks, we saw actually a decrease in calls. I think wow. people were so concerned about what they needed to do to keep themselves safe and mm -hmm. figuring out if they had a job and all of those types of things. And now that we've all started to kind of settle into our new normal, mm -hmm. now we are finding that we're getting more people calling in, concerned about their drinking, um, concerned about being isolated, uh, feeling very alone and separated from the world and reaching out for help. So we have in the last week or so seen an increase in those types of calls. So we've got the Facebook page pulled up, Paula, that 264-9409. Is that the best number for people to use if they were looking for resources or needed to talk to somebody? Absolutely, yes. And we also, we have a counselor who's on call outside of our normal hours. So even if it's on the weekend or it's very late at night or even the middle of the night, if you need to talk to somebody, um, we are here for that. We, we want to support the people in our community, whether they're active clients or not, um, reach out for that help. And, and like you said, we know during this time, one of the concerns that and you've seen this in the media recently, the concern is now that people have settled into this new normal, a lot of people have been using alcohol or other drugs to cope mm -hmm. with the situation and they're finding that it's becoming quite problematic for them. Yeah, it's, it's so interesting to me. I mean, obviously, you know, my house, um, I, I, I would say that we have had more, you know, beer and wine in the house. and. And I just this week kind of reset my diet and I haven't had anything to drink and I'm gonna try and wait to the weekend if I even do. So even for folks that I guess would just be, I don't even know how to phrase it, like a casual you know, yeah. drinker, I, I still feel like because I was just talking to somebody yesterday and it's just so it's just so wild that you can't even do that thing where you just go out to dinner like so many times my wife and I would just call, you know my mom or my mother-in-law would come over for an hour hang out with the kids and you just go out to grab something um, but yeah I mean it, it is interesting I, I've thought about that myself like I don't want to overindulge and use the excuse that well because there's a pandemic I can I can have a beer on a Wednesday night you know what I mean I mean I've, I've felt that I've processed that and um, and I can't even imagine how folks are managing, but that's why your team is there at New Horizons, and, th and that's why you're on with us today, because it's important to let people know that they're not alone, right? Absolutely, people aren't alone, and, and what we know, like one of the things that we know about addiction is it's a disease of isolation, and so a lot of people, um, their usage becomes their best friend whether it's alcohol or other drugs, it becomes their best friend and that's what they turn to and they isolate themselves then from their other social relationships. They become distance from, distant from family and friends yep. because of the problems it creates. Mm -hmm. And we know that in successful recovery, people need to break out of that isolation and reach mm -hmm. out to other people and have that social support. And yet here we are, social distancing, don't leave your house, don't go to the grocery store, <laughs> don't do anything. And even like AA and NA meetings mm -hmm. are no longer meeting in person sure. throughout the country. And um, our clients who 
were attending meetings and were doing very well, they've had to adjust to that that change and figure out, you know, how can I make online connections? How can I connect to people still and not feel isolated? And so that's, you know, kind of the client perspective. But like you said, the general public perspective that we really want people to think about as well is don't turn to just alcohol or drugs as your as your stress reliever during this difficult time because it's not going to necessarily solve all your problems no you're totally right and it's yeah it, it, it's just such a weird circumstance that we find ourselves in are you advising people um in addition to providing you know services over the phone and soon zoom which is great but is part of it also encouraging them to get outside when it's not snowing, of course, and, and, and maybe go for a walk? Because I think that is something that's, that's still getting lost with folks is that, you know, they, they don't understand maybe that you can get outside and walk around the neighborhood or go to a park. I mean, I, I just think that that's got to be part of it, right, as, as far as yeah, getting exactly. outside, right? Well, think about, I mean like you mentioned, even just leaving the house for a little bit, your old norm was to maybe go grab a bite to eat with your wife. And just the act of getting outside of your house can be very empowering. And so whether that's, um, you know, going for going for a walk around a park or just going for a walk around the block. But yeah, we are really focused with our clients about what type of stress management techniques are you using? And there's plenty of healthy ones, you know, whether it's taking a walk, whether it's having some quiet, unplugged time where you kind of connect with with just with yourself or with nature. Mm -hmm. Journaling is a real powerful thing that people can do to kind of get outside of themselves Mm -hmm. and and kind of recharge, refocus. Mm -hmm. So, So we're really encouraging that. But yeah, and physical exercise itself sure. is is an awesome thing to do and you know there's been a lot of promoting of like online classes and sure. little videos that you can do at home mm-hmm. and we're encouraging our clients to participate in as many of those things as possible and and the general public because it's that's how we're all going to get through it so as of right now and if for folks that are just tuning in paul Lavasser, program director new horizons paul as of right now I mean, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the end of the month, but are you anticipating just, is, are you guys following the Iowa Department of Health? What's the, what's the protocol as far as when services right. might get back to the, the norm or, or normal-ish? Is it just depending on what the Iowa Department of Public Health advises? We are definitely looking at the Iowa Department of Public Health for all of that type of guidance. And as a department of the Robert Young Center, we have offices. Robert Young Center provides mental health and substance abuse services throughout Iowa and Illinois. And so we are looking at maintaining whatever the higher level is. So if Illinois' restrictions are a little bit higher, um, we're also trying to kind of follow those in in Iowa and vice versa. So um, whatever measures they're saying we need to do we need to take to keep our clients and our staff safe, we're gonna to continue to do that. And as you know, the guidance comes out daily. The right. press conferences are every single day yeah. and we are definitely tuning into that. Mm-hmm. And um, also, you, you know, utilizing the resources that we have is because we're part of a health system, Sure. looking to direct contacts through the Iowa Hospital Association, through the CDC and those types of things. Yeah, it seems like there's probably been a lot of the, a, a word that's getting used is like coordination. There's a lot of good efforts between different places, and I, and I imagine between public health and Unity Point, I mean, and the Iowa Department of Public Health, there's a lot of good pooling of resources so that you have everything available for folks that you're taking care of. I mean, that's maybe that'll maybe that'll stay as that sense of working together. Not that it wasn't there to begin with, but you you all certainly have had to get more creative, right? With respect to making sure you have all the resources that you need. Oh, absolutely. You know, even just little things like we take our, all of our team members temperature when they walk in the door, you wouldn't believe how difficult it was to get our hands on a thermometer, you know? So we we have to rely on each other 
to uh, accomplish those tasks that we need to. Mm -hmm. We were very fortunate. We had a lot of volunteers in our community who made face masks, the fabric mm -hmm. face masks, and um, those were deployed to all of our team members. So a lot of us are still coming into the office every single day and we're mm -hmm. practicing social distancing. Mm -hmm. But when we do come together as a group, we, we follow those CDC recommendations, we wear our face masks, and sure. we do what we need to to keep each other safe. So we've got the website pulled up, and again, we're, we're looking at New Horizon services, 24-hour crisis services, substance abuse evaluations, OWI evaluations, adolescent outpatient treatment, adult intensive outpatient treatment, continuing care. You know, it, it's so great to have New Horizons in Muscatine serving the county. Um, been doing it for a long time, which is great. And and I, and I again, you know, I imagine because some of the other things that you guys do so well as you get into the you know in in a typical year, you'd be getting into the classrooms and talking to young people about maybe yes. preventing them from getting into substance abuse or alcohol early on. So I wonder, is that something that you've been able to still work with the school districts as far as giving them that information that maybe they could send out in a virtual backpack or? Exactly, so our prevention coordinator, Jamie Cruz, has been in communication with the school districts that we work with, which are Muscatine, Wilton, and West Liberty schools. And with them providing virtual classrooms at this time, we are looking at what opportunities do we have to continue with the curriculum that we were providing before um, and still get the message out in, in the best, most meaningful way to those students. Sure. So we're still kind of hammering out some of those details. Um, but right now we are looking at, like you said, kind of more of a virtual backpack type of mm -hmm. situation where uh, we're providing reading materials for the students and maybe some activities that they would do with a parent, mm -hmm. um, similar to what we would have done in the classroom had we been able to continue in the classroom setting. It's so fascinating to me, Paula, we've been looking at your Facebook page and there was just a post we, we had seen about, you know, like the e-cigarettes or the vapes. And I just think about how the last five years, and maybe it's longer than that, but just from my observation, it seems like so much has changed in the last five years, coupled, you know, with this pandemic. I mean, you talk about getting resources together, but man, that continuing education for yourself and your team, you have to be on top of the next, I don't wanna say the next trend because I don't wanna validate it that way, but just talk about that, right? I mean, there's so much continuous education that has to be going on, even with everything that's, that's happening, right? Because you don't wanna, when, again, when things do get back to normal, we don't wanna be behind on something, right? Exactly. So like if you look at and when you use the word trends, when you look at some of the really trending topics in terms of substance use over the last maybe three or four years, it is about vaping and it's been about opioid use. And we have had to stay kind of ahead of that curve. And we're fortunate because um, the Iowa Department of Public Health has been very good about having opportunities, educational opportunities that our staff participate in. And although the vaping issue really came to light probably in the last year about how dangerous it is, this is information that we've had on the forefront from day one. When they started out with e-cigarettes and individuals in the community were saying that they felt it was safer. Of course, the manufacturers were saying it was a safer alternative. Sure. And um, the consistent message from day one was, hey, the, the jury's still out on this. We don't have enough data to tell us whether or not this is a safer alternative. And as additional data has become available and as products have changed and morphed over time, we know for certain that these are not safe alternatives. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the prevention team has been on top of that since day one. Well, I appreciate everything that you guys have done and you're going to continue to do. And again, April is Alcohol Awareness Month for folks that are watching. Um, please know that if you're watching, whether it's live or at some point later in the week or down the road, if you know somebody that could use help, I mean, that's that's what you're there for, right? That's what everybody's Absolutely. there for is to step yes. in and help. Um, and that number again, 563-264, what was it, 0409? 9409. 9409. Yep. 
There we go. 9409. We've got the Facebook page pulled up, uh, New Horizons 1605 Cedar Street, right kind of behind the hospital, sort of. Yeah. It's kind of the brick building, 563-264-9409. Uh, Paula, thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Take care of yourself. And if you need anything, please let me know. And I can't wait to get back to the quote unquote normal so you can be sitting next to us here in the studio. Yeah. But I appreciate you doing this. Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely have me back when we can sit side by side. Even if it's ten, <laughs> even if it's six or ten feet apart, right? You know, what I mean? exactly. I could put as a. Long as they don't have to wear a mask. Right. I'm I could okay put. That. Well, I could put like a bubble suit on, which some people would yeah. prefer, anyways. I think you know, like that <laughs> could be that could be the new thing. Well, I appreciate it again. Have a good rest of your day, okay? Yeah, thanks. You too, Tony. Thanks, Paula. Bye bye. Bye. She's great. You know, I I I have a lot of respect for the work that Paula and her team does. Um. And she's she's so smart, and I, I was just trying to think, you know, we've had Paul on the show a couple of times, and, and other folks from her team at New Horizons, and yeah, I mean, I think that's a reality of the situation that we find ourselves in. Um, you talk about people that typically would deal with substance abuse, and then maybe they've got some, like, seasonal depression coupled with that, and then what happens when you're in a pandemic, and you wake up, and there's snow on the ground, and what do you, like, come on, look at that, there's snow, like, nobody's excited about that, right? I mean, I don't know. Is, was anybody in this room excited about snow? I just kind of was like, I, sometimes I feel like I don't pay attention at all. And that's how I felt when I saw the snow. Like, I had seen people post on Facebook pictures of snow, right? I think uh, my friend uh, Kevin Phelps, meteorologist with KWQC, had posted about, like, more snow Thursday. And I was just like, what? And then I opened my front door. And there was my beautiful Toyota Sienna van, and it was covered in snow. And it's just like, sometimes it snows in April, I guess. Look at that. You can see the snow blowing. <laughs> so I, I kind of did like, uh, you know, I did a, I opened my garage, I grabbed a broom, because I don't know where my snow brush is, because it's April 15th, uh, and I start sweeping off snow from my car, and then I didn't do a good enough job, so I'm coming down Highway 61, and there's snow just blowing off my hood into the windshield. Windshield wipers are going. I got the heat on full blast. Um, and I'm, I'm just glad that my wife was able to park in the garage. This is why I got to get a shed. I don't want to buy a shed. Gosh, growing up, you know, what am I going to buy a shed so that I can fit both my cars in my garage? <sighs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to buy a shed. But then if I have a shed and one of my kids climbs on the shed, I could finally say, get off the shed, like Will Ferrell did on Saturday Night Live. So maybe I do need to get the shed. Got that government stimulus money. Check your bank account today because you might be surprised. If you're doing that move where you're checking the bank account, there's my van. Come on. You see my caption above that, Chad? A little, little scroll. just says, nope. <laughs> I was going to write, like, here's my obligatory... It's April 15th in Iowa, and there's snow in my car. But then I just was like, nope. Um, there's a couple things I want to mention before we get out of here for today. So I, I think it was yesterday on the show I was talking about what to do when you want to get out of the house. And I'm with you. If you feel cooped up, and, you're, and if you're still going to work like I am, or you're working from home, sometimes you just got to go for a drive. We talked yesterday about, about looking at the floods, and I had another comment. I said... If my wife has to work this weekend, maybe I'll go to Feel the Dreams. So check this out. I called Feel the Dreams last night because I checked their Facebook page, and nowhere on the Feel the Dreams Facebook page does it say that they're closed, right? Nothing says, like, hey, due to the current situation. So I call, and the guy's like, Feel the Dreams. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, is this Ray Kinsella? Uh, I was like, hey, um, thinking about taking a ride this weekend, are you guys still open? And this is the direct quote, and I wish I could remember the guy's name at Field of Dreams. He said, this is Iowa. We're open. And I just thought, wow, this is Iowa. We're open. How about it? And they're having a Major League Baseball game in Dyersville. Are you kidding me? They're building a stadium behind the Field of Dreams. They're also building, like, a, a venue to have, like, weddings. So the guy says, this is Iowa. We're open. And I said, I know. I'm in Iowa. I'm in Muscatine. I just want to know before I make an hour and 40-minute drive 
that so but now i don't know like it's gonna snow thursday but then it's gonna be like sunny and 68 on saturday i just want to get out of the house and my mom has never been she loved the movie i've been to field of dreams several times had a lot of friends when i was at saint ambrose that lived in dubuque so i spent a lot of time in dubuque and Dyersville and my wife's aunt lives in Dyersville. We drive through Dyersville going to Prairie to Sheen, Wisconsin to see my wife's grandma, Jean. I like Field of Dreams. I think it's super cool. I'd probably be the guy that goes into the gift shop and buys something that he doesn't need, right? Just because you're there. What is that? A container of infield dirt? Sign me up. $75. No, I'm kidding. Of course, I don't think they're selling dirt from the infield in the Field of Dreams gift shop. Now, remember back in the day, when I was in college, there were two owners of Field of Dreams, and they hated each other. They used to have two separate gift shops and two entrances. So there was somebody that owned the house and, like, part of the whatever, and then there was somebody that owned, like, the field and then up to the corn. And there were legitimately two separate gift shops. And I'm not making that up because I remember the first time I went to Field of Dreams in 2003, let's call it August 2003 maybe. And I thought, this is weird that there's two gift shops. And they were like, no, you got to go to this one. Because my friend Nick, remember yesterday, I said my friend's dad is one of the ghost players, Nick Ehlers, his dad, one of the, I think his dad's name is Mike. His nickname is Ace. This is a very deep dive. Uh, shout out to Ace Ehlers. Anyways, he's been a ghost player and they do that on the weekends. Uh, they have guys come out of the corn, and it's a whole thing. And then, like, Kevin Costner has been there. They've done concerts. They do reunions. They had, you know, professional athletes. Oh, there's the cheapest thing I could buy, a picture of my friend's dad for 50 cents. Uh, I would probably, I don't know what I would buy. I would buy something. You know me. I feel like an Irish guilt. You go into a gift shop. You're like, well, I don't need anything, but I don't want to not buy anything. Sign me up for some tchotchkes. What do you got? Got any Field of Dream pens? So anyways, uh, if the weather cooperates and if my wife works, I'm probably hitting the road. Not that you care. Maybe you care. I'm just trying to encourage you. If you're feeling cooped up, get out and go for a drive. Go look at We showed you a beautiful picture that Chris Anderson took of the river. I know it's flooding. Maybe you just go do that. That's like a muscatine thing, right? You cruise and check out the flood. That is a thing that happens. Somebody could be selling... I don't know if you could sell like street food down there, if people driving by. I don't think that's a thing now, but maybe, you know, you get a little ice cream cart. What are you here for? Looking at the flood? Need a Chaco Taco? Those are my favorites back in the day. Anyways. All right. Um, I want to mention uh, a couple of things. So today is April 15th. It is National Tax Day. This used to be in the normal world. This was the tax day, right? This was the deadline to get your taxes done. But now we've uh, got those pushed out. Uh, hopefully you've got your taxes filed, and uh, again, check your bank account because you might wake up to a uh, little stimulus money. Today's also Titanic Remembrance Day, the Titanic Remembrance Day. It is Glazed Spiral Ham Day, <laughs> which is just, I, this is on the internet. You can find it for yourself. Glazed Spiral Ham Day. It's Rubber Eraser Day, and Chris managed, Chris always finds th these things in the store. It's marvelous. I loved erasers like this back in the day. I did. Sorry, I should not wiggle them so much. I loved erasers like this. So this is a, a nice rubber eraser. And then the Ticonderota, ta is that how you say that? I remember these, where you put the pack on top of the pencil when the pencil eraser wears out, and you're like, oh, don't worry. If you brought this into, like, anywhere between, let's say, third and sixth grade, you were living high on the hog, man. Because then your, your, your desk mate, somebody sitting next to you, can I have an eraser? And don't ever say, can I borrow an eraser? You're not going to give it back. It's like when somebody says, can I borrow a pen? You're just going to keep it. How about you just say, can I have a pen? So it's, not, it's rubber eraser day. And then it's take a wild guess day. And this is something that we have for sale here at the store because we do have things like games and stuff. This is a game called What's in the Box? And I love this concept. So essentially what you do is you open it up and you place items inside the box. And I just want people to see that this was, somebody had gone and opened this side. It wasn't us. Chris found this in the store, but he said he put something in here. 
And you want me to try and guess what it is? Okay. Is my hand going to fit? I don't know either. Let's see. Okay. All right. My hand. Okay, I got my hand in the box. And this feels like some type of stuffed animal. I, w I, I should find out how much this costs, because this could be so fun with the kids. You literally just put random tchotchkes in your house. I'm going to say that this is a stuffed penguin or a bird. And I'm judging that based on what I'm feeling. And I'm going to try, try and not. I might have to buy this now. Let's see. Look at that. Not too bad. What's in the box? It's like the opposite of the movie Seven because you put fun things in it. And if you've seen the movie Seven, you're welcome for that reference. This is the safe at home version of what's in the box. This is fascinating. So look at that. You just, you literally, I mean, if you got kids at home and they're not going to school and uh, it doesn't look like school's going back, spoiler alert, don't quote me on that, but listen, I want school to go back. You can keep them, cancel summer, keep my kids in school. Uh, this is so fun. I don't know how much this is, but I got that stimulus money. I'm going to buy everything. Is there a price tag? I don't know. It doesn't say, but it's, hey, look, it's used. It's used. I should get it. It should be a discount. <laughs> like, you put your hand in it, bro. You got to buy it now. I can't sell that. Maybe we'll just keep it here on the set. We'll do this with guests. We could do that. We could expense it out. Yeah, why not? Brent would still get credit for the sale. I like that it says for ages four and up. Yeah, I'm not going to play it with my 19-month-old. What am I, what do you got to tell me? Like, what do I got to, I got to know that? That's funny. Anyway, so that's cool. That, I, I've never seen that before. And this is uh, a Thai beanie baby. And uh, this is Twiggy, everybody. It says Twiggy. Got some glitter feet right there. And more tchotchkes uh, for the kids. Tchotchkes for the kids. And then you might as well, this, uh, this uh, ficus over here, this, I'll grab it. This ficus is like a, they call it, what did you say, Chris? They call it a rubber, rubber tree. Huh. Yeah, it is rubber eraser day. So they call this, and you can kind of see, I mean, it looks like they've sprayed it with something, but I don't even know if they have. I think that's just how it is. So this is kind of cool. I like the pot that it's in. Uh, would look good. Probably low maintenance, a little bit of water, and there you go, right? So that's fantastic. So check that out. I like, I like props, right? A ficus. There you go. Common plant in the home and the office, mainly because they look like a typical tree with a single trunk and spreading canopy. But for all their popularity, ficus plants are finicky. Ooh, I like that word, finicky. However, if you know how to care for a ficus tree, what do I have to do besides give it water? If you know how to care for a ficus tree, you'll be better equipped with keeping it healthy and happy in your home. What is the deal with the ficus? What do I got to talk to it? It's a plant. You put water in it. What am I, what am I not going to know how to do? It's idiot proof, right? You put it by the light, the window. What do you mean? What is so different? I don't know. It's kind of cool looking. Now I feel like there's too much. I got too much response. They can't tolerate low temperatures or drafts. Same ficus tree. Uh, temperature has to stay above 60. Uh, that's a lot. They like humidity. I don't like humidity. I'm sweating right now, so I'm not taking the ficus tree. I'm going to hard pass on that right now. There's Delmer's wife walking over. She works at H&R Block. All right. Um, I want to look at the uh, Discover Muscatine newspaper ad if we could, because here's what I almost did yesterday, and I probably should have because there's snow on the ground now. I was going to buy mulch, right? And I, I should have bought mulch because now my, my, my grass is, uh, you know, has snow all over it. Uh, and I looked in my backyard this morning, and there were bunny tracks everywhere. I think we've got a herd of bunnies, because nobody was in the backyard, and there must have just been, like, bunnies racing each other. I don't know. It was a whole thing. So let's go to that Discover Muscatine ad. You can see that on the back page, we've got designer shade mulch, all-American topsoil. America topsoil. It smells like freedom and bacon. All American potting soil comes with a free baby bald eagle. And it's a 40 pound bag. So this is not only a good deal, but it's a workout. You ever lifted one of those? There's, whew, you put it right on the shoulder. Assorted perennials, which will come back, right? Perennials come back. 
and then the hens and chicks on there as well. If you're trying to spruce up the, the patio, the partio, the deck, the backyard, some Adirondack chairs, umbrellas, outdoor heaters. Listen, you, you could use an outdoor heater. Holy smokes. I mean, until the weather changes this weekend, it's been brisk, y'all. Below that, a sectional for the outdoors. Uh, nice. I like that right there, Chad, that one in the middle, that lakeside six-piece bench set. That table is nice. It's kind of like metal. The chairs feel sturdy, right? You can see they got metal legs. I am not skinny, although I've lost 11 pounds since Monday. What's my secret? Chicken wings. That's my secret. And stress, uh, but mainly chicken wings. That's true. 11 pounds since Monday. No sugar. Also probably part of it. So check that out, and if you need a wagon, of course, if you're getting around the neighborhood, put the kids in the wagon. And then, this is the best deal, and it starts today. Please cut that coupon out and go to Hy-Vee Gas and save 25 cents off a gallon. There's no, you don't even have to have the fuel saver card. I mean, we'd love if you had it, but that's just right now. Go to Hy-Vee Gas, give them the coupon, 25 cents off a gallon. What are we still at? A dollar 44, and we don't need to put the camera out there. Is that what it says? Dollar 44. Um, dollar 44 minus 25 cents. I'm so bad at math. Minus 25 cents is a dollar 19 a gallon times 20 gallons. You can fill up your car for $23. Okay, that's awesome. That's a, that's just for you, right? No, you don't have to buy anything. I mean, you got to buy gas. Dollar 44 live look right now. Hyvee Gas, oldest Hyvee Gas station in the company, by the way. Second one ever friendliest staff, doing full service at Hy-Vee Gas now. So if you need that, you can just pull up and they'll, uh, you, you give them the old like wave and then the, you could press the fuel button or you could call in and they'll come and take care of you. But anyways, that 25 cent off per gallon fuel saver is awesome and I want you to take advantage of that. If I do venture out of town this weekend, I would need gas before that and I'm absolutely going to use the coupon. Yes, 100%. So get that paper. You may, you may have got it. We got it yesterday in the mail. Maybe you get it today. Uh, the coupon is valid starting today, so please know that. Um, okay, I'm going to give a shout-out to uh, Simply Soothing. So Matt Schweitzer, hy Store Director, Matt Schweitzer, brought this on the show yesterday. It was a brand-new product, still is. Here at the store, it's uh, from our friends at Simply Soothing in Columbus Junction, Iowa. This stuff is so good, the bottle's glowing, everybody. So, but what I didn't know, because, now listen, Chad, if you go to the comments on that post, I posted that on my Facebook last night, there's a comment from Ryan Burchett, former meteorologist at Channel 6 and current owner of Mississippi River Distilling Company, and look at what Ryan says, it's, where is this comment? There you go, it gets even better, that's Mississippi River Distilling Company hand sanitizer, Bottled for personal use by Bug Soother. So the hand sanitizer in this container is from Ryan Burchett and the Mississippi River Distilling Company because they're selling it in like bulk supplies. And he partnered with Frida and Bug Soother to get it into the small bottles like we have right here. So right here, and it's a hot commodity and we have a ton of it still. Since yesterday, this is Tuesday, I'm doing, what is this, Wednesday? What's the day? Is it Wednesday? We're doing, this. it's Wednesday, April 15th. We have some of this near Register 1. There's a basket by the pharmacy and near the health market, and I think there's some in Wine and Spirits. So that's really cool. I didn't know the connection between Mississippi River Distilling Company and my friend Ryan Burchett. I've known Ryan Burchett since 2007 when he got to town to become the meteorologist at Channel 6, and he's owned Mississippi River Distilling Company for years, and then, of course, Bug Soother. Uh, so that's great. I love that. I had no idea. So I edited my post to include the Mississippi River Distilling Company. Long story short, if you need hand sanitizer, it's here at Hy-Vee, $5.99, limit to ready-to-roll spray bottle. Isn't that fantastic? I'm so excited. All right, um, let's see. If we go, Chad, if we go, oh, I don't want to go out of order. Let's, let's talk about that. So you got, this is the last day for that three-day sale. So Hy-Vee has been doing uh, three-day sales, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Today's Wednesday, April 15th. And these are the last, this, this is the last day to take advantage of these deals. I'm trying to talk. It's hard to talk, everybody. Buy two, get two, bacon-wrapped chicken filet. I laugh because... I love chicken, and I love bacon. 
put them together, what do you get? Bippity boppity yum, right? That's great. Man. Uh, also, I love the deli and Deluso premium thin slice turkey or chicken. Buy a pound, get a pound. Buy a pound, get a pound. Come on, Deluso is the best lunch meat ever, period. Drop the mic, walk away. Challenge me on that. You can't. I already win. It's a good deal. Uh, Bogo on the Hickory House meatloaf dinner. Mom, the meatloaf. That's good. Meatloaf. Also uh, got to interview Meatloaf, the singer, a couple years ago. He was nice. Buy one, get one free farmhand breakfast sandwich. If I wasn't low-carbing it, I would order one of those and eat it on the show. That's how good it is. I would sit here and eat it in front of you. Buy one, get one free cucumbers. <clears throat> so that's a thing if you like vegetables. Right next to the cupcakes. <laughs> Buy one, get one free. Let's see. Oh, cucumbers. Oh, cupcakes. Yes. That's like a two different audiences right there. Not that the same person isn't going to buy cucumbers and cupcakes, but I feel like I would have put the cupcakes not near the cucumbers. Uh, and then there's a couple more deals on that ad as well. It's the last day for it is today. Please come and check us out, and we'll get you taken care of. Did I send you the new ad that starts today, the corporate ad? I don't remember if I did. It was a bigger file. I may have ran out of time. I didn't get here as early as I have been today. Um, because, and did I also mention that I had to let my car warm up because there was snow on it. <laughs> snow in April. I mean, I wanted spring. I didn't say I wanted snow, right? I didn't want that. <clears throat> Man, rude. Mother Nature, you're rude. Okay, um, we got hyvee.com slash mealtime, and I was talking to my coworker, Skip, Armstrong, who was on the show the other day. Were they here Monday? I am like, I am at a loss for what day. It is. We didn't even do the show Monday. We were here. They were here Friday. Okay. All right. We're doing the show. Today's Wednesday still. We've done it uh, yesterday. We'll be here Thursday, Friday. Anyways, long story short, go to hyvee.com slash mealtime and take advantage of ordering your favorite hyvee meals to go, whether it's sushi, uh, hyvee Chinese, uh, or stuff from the kitchen. Certainly, you can do it that way. You can park right out in front, and we'll bring you your order. You don't even have to come into the store if you don't want to. And then hy teaming up with Grubhub. They're not Grubhub. What is it? DoorDash. Jeez Louise. Teaming up with DoorDash to deliver. So hy com slash mealtime. The website is right there. And you get your order in, and it's super easy. I'm pulling it up on my phone at the same time. We've got it on the screen right there. Uh, purchase ready-to-eat meals online, pick them up at the store, bring your meals to your vehicle, and then again, going to be door dashing them very soon. Hy-Vee Chinese, always a good idea. The, the giant tenderloins, fresh rolled sushi, take and bake options as well. Uh, all you need to do is order at least 30 minutes in advance. It's that easy because uh, we're trying to get you taken care of, everybody. So we know that it's, uh, in, you know, times are tough, and uh, if you don't want to cook, please consider your muscatine hy um, and talk to Boney and the crew, and they'll take great care of you. They do an excellent job. I'm very happy with those guys. So kudos to that crew. Uh, we'll do a couple more things, and we'll get out of here really quick. Delmer, again, in the deli, he's got awesome deals on Kerrygold Irish cheese. If you haven't tried this stuff yet, I don't even know what he's got left, but it is really good. So I should tomorrow get a pack of cheese, pay for it, open it up, eat it on the show. And if Delmer wasn't off today, I would have invited him to come on. Maybe we'll have Delmer on tomorrow. I think I have two guests already, but we could always make room for Delmer, right? Uh, so anyways, go to the deli, backside, all that cheese. There's the uh, Kerrygold it's really good. It's two dollars off, four ninety nine. Normally six ninety nine. Good variety as well, and I want you to take advantage of that deal because it's just really good. And if you want them to cut it, I mean, I'm sure that they would do that for you. You know, we got knives at the house. I don't know if I have a cheese knife. Is that a thing? Those are a thing, right? Cheese knives. I don't have a cheese knife. So you know, but that's it, <clears throat> right there. The Dubliner is very good. Brad, you got that one. It's good stuff, right? I'd probably go Dubliner and the aged cheddar, I think. But look at the variety. Kerrygold Irish cheese, grass-fed cows. Is that an Irish accent? Kind of. And, uh, and then right next to that is the Kerrygold Irish butter, which is my favorite. Aged cheddar and the Dubliner. Get your Kerrygold cheese. Yeah, it's really good. It's good stuff. I like it. And that's a good price, so please check that out. And then Delmer also, again, you know, just rocking it with the Deluso lunch meat. 
and the Hy-Vee ham, which is on sale as well. Okay, uh, I think that's good. I feel like we can get out of here. I want to thank Paula Lavasser for being here. Paula is the uh, program director with New Horizons. And if you need some help or need someone to talk to, that's what they're there for. April is Alcohol Awareness Month. Uh, New Horizons, part of Unity Point Health, Trinity Muscatine Public Health, and we appreciate the efforts of their staff. They're doing everything via the telephone right now and coming soon, secure Zoom consultations to be able to help people because this is a tough time. So if you feel like you could use somebody to talk to, please get a hold of New Horizons. Paula's team ready to take excellent care of you. Tomorrow on the show, Thursday, <clears throat> the 16th of April, we'll talk to Christy Roby Williams who is the Director of Public Health for Trinity Muscatine, uh, and get an update from her on things. And then later tomorrow, 9 a.m., sitting right here, everybody's favorite, Lieutenant Greg Bach with the Salvation Army, and uh, we'll, we'll see how things are going. Obviously, they're taking care of a lot of people. They're feeding upwards of 300 people. Uh, I think it's a day or three times a week. It's wild. I mean, I, I don't know how they're pulling it off, but you can always support the Salvation Army, who's working really well with the United Way and MCSA. We talked to Scott Dahlke yesterday, and uh, we're going to continue to have conversations like that, meaningful conversations. Friday on the show, we'll talk to my friend, uh, I think it's Corporal or Captain Quinn Reese. I should know his title. Quinn Reese. Muscatine County Sheriff's Office. We'll see how things are going for the Sheriff's Department. Quinn also running for sheriff and uh, a good guy. So we'll look forward to seeing him. And uh, yeah, so two more shows this week. I appreciate you watching. Take care of yourself. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't feel like you need to shovel, right? I mean, my driveway was melted. Parking lot here at the store um, in good shape. You know, certainly there's spots with mulch out in the parking lot that have snow on it. But yeah, I mean, don't be surprised. Now, here's the thing. I, I, I get the frustration like I had when I had to warm up my car and, uh, and get the snow off of it. But then at the other end of the spectrum, uh, the government stimulus money showed up. So, uh, you know, not bad. So will you be uh, trying to, that's what they're trying to do, trying to get you to stimulate the local economy. Uh, if you're able to, to give, you could always consider doing that and uh, just check the old bank account. You might be pleasantly surprised, everybody. All right, and just remember, Field of Dreams is open because <laughs> this is Iowa. I could not believe when the guy said that. No, oh, this is Iowa. We're open. I was like, yeah, okay, I get it. Well, that's great. I mean, listen, you know, you, and who's, who says you can't go to Field of Dreams and you're out 